Now it's not often that you can get lucky with something pretty special just hanging around at the side of the street, but I did. Because a couple of months back on my way into work, I stumbled across this very bike with this very sign just laying there, right for my picking, let's face it. And what's so special about it then? Well, for a start, it's a touring bike, which you don't commonly see that much these days. We've got Reynolds tubing, Mavic wheels, a Suntour group set, and best of all, it's free of charge. Today, we're gonna to look at how to restore a bike from basically what could have gone straight into the trash to the workshop. First up then, we're gonna check out the frame and forks to make sure they are in tip-top condition, or well, as close as you can get to that for a bike which is free or left outside of someone's house, with a note saying on, please take. Now, in all seriousness, unless it is a bike such as a Colnago Master Olympic made out of super steel, then if it is bent or twisted or cracked or crushed, then you're probably not gonna to want to spend the money, the time or the effort in actually restoring it, unless of course you have a real I don't know, kind of attraction towards it or something like that. So what are we actually gonna check for? Well, make sure that the lugs or the welds are actually A-OK, -okay, so they're not cracked or coming apart at all. And make sure that the frame tubes are nice and round or certainly in the shape they're meant to be so they're not pitted or dented, anything like that. Also, if there are any signs of rust make sure they're not actually going through the tube set. A little bit of surface rust, that's okay, because we can get rid of that. But essentially, you wanna make sure that the frame is up to the job of holding and supporting your weight as you ride. Now, a very basic type of measurement that you could do to check how in line the frame is, is with some string. As you can see here, with the wheel now removed from the bike. So, with that piece of string, you want to wrap it around the head tube, bypass the actual seat tube itself here, so it's going either side, and then join it onto your dropouts. And you want that string to be as tight as you can get it. I'm not very good at tying knots, but I've got it pretty much spot on for my needs. But what exactly is this gonna tell us? It's gonna tell us how in line the rear of the bike is with the front. So if you've got yourself a carbon frame or an aluminium frame and it's out of line, then it's probably best to walk away from this right now because you're not gonna be able to get that put back into place very cheaply at all. With a steel frame, however, there are various methods of actually cold setting a frame back into place. But now I've got this structure set up, I'm actually really keen to find out if it is in line or not because I haven't had a look so far. So with it there and in place, I've got myself a handy tape measure. I'm gonna measure how far away the string is from the actual seat tube on either side. It's an inch and a half. Let's check on this side. An inch and a half as well, I'm in luck. Obviously, if the frame is all well and good, we are gonna to need to check out the rest of the components because without them, you're not gonna get anywhere very fast, are you? So let's start off with the wheels because generally, they're one of the most expensive components to replace. So give them a spin and actually check to make sure that there's nothing unusual or vibrations, anything like that coming from them that they shouldn't have. And also, they run nice and true and straight, whilst checking to the sidewalls of the rims to make sure they're nice and flat and not worn away, which could be dangerous, as well as those spokes. Make sure none of those are bent or twisted at all. And then, lastly, the tyres, because that's obviously a very important part of the bike. Now, handlebar and stem, normally you can see instantly if a handlebar has become bent because, well, it's out of shape, let's face it. Now, as for that handlebar tape, I would actually advise totally removing it. Therefore, you can inspect for any corrosion on handlebars because some people out there, they do have a tendency to sweat a lot and it works its way through the handlebar tape onto the bars and can have quite horrible consequences, including handlebars snapping, believe it or not. So make sure you don't fall foul to that. Have a good look and then give it a good old clean up too to remove any residue. Next up, let's check two of the most problematic areas on older style bikes, such as this one. And by that, I mean the bottom bracket and the headset. First up then, with the cranks, just try and rock them from side to side. As you can see here, there's play in that, which spells trouble, or potential trouble at least, or at least an adjustment job. And then with the headset at the front, you want to do the same really, try and rock that forward. Now the easiest way to check out that headset is with the bike down here on the ground. Lock up both brakes, this is my preferred method, and try and move the bike backwards and forwards. Now if there is any movements at all in the headset area here, which you would feel, believe me, 
then that's going to need a little bit of adjustment later on down the line. Next up is checking out the brakes. So give the levers a pull, make sure that the actual calipers or the cantilevers in this case are doing their jobs correctly, which they appear to be doing all pretty well. Quite retro and old school, aren't they, these cantilevers? I like them. Uh, also, check out the cables too for any signs of obvious fraying or splits, such like. It's not the end of the world if you have to replace them because they do come pretty cheap. Then we'll move on to the actual gearing system. So in my case, nice and easy here with a pair of down tube shifters. I can see if the mechs are working okay, which, well, they appear to be doing their job. And as for the back one, let's check out if that index gears are still working. Oh, like a dream. Quality components, they wear in, they don't wear out. Well, that's the old saying anyway. Of course, if your cables have in fact snapped or stretched or anything like that, there is a way of doing this manually, and that's by grabbing, this is certainly for a cabled ridge railer, grabbing it and just pedaling and pushing it across and then making sure that, that spring actually returns the, the derailleur to the correct place. Finally, check out the chain for anywhere. So if you've got yourself a chain checking tool, then please do use it. Luckily, this one is on 0.5 on the wear indicator, so it is good for certainly a few thousand kilometers more, I reckon, judging by the state of it so far. It looks to have had a good innings. Let's get on to the real fun part though, fixing it up. But what needs my attention then on this 80s classic? Well, I've given the wheels a spin, and do you know what? They're all okay. There is a very slight little kink though in the rim, so I am gonna adjust it here with the spoke key just to get it a little bit straighter, but fortunately, these cup and cone bearings are okay. And that's a real relief, because sometimes these jobs can turn into something longer than a five minute job, because a cup and cone bearing maybe the actual race of the inner shell of the hub could be pitted away, likewise with the cone, therefore rendering them, well, useless. But I'm so lucky with this bike, I can't believe it. But I am gonna just give it a quick turn with the spoke key. Now an area which certainly does need looking at is this front derailleur cable. Just look at it, horrible, isn't it? Frayed, nasty, it's just screaming out to you, I want to puncture the end of your finger. When that happens to you, it's like standing on a plug or a piece of Lego. It hurts a lot. And for the cost of a couple of dollars, a couple of euros, a couple of pounds, just simply replace any inner cables that are like that. It is gonna give you either better shifting or better braking, and it's gonna be safer too. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, other than that slightly frayed or, well, quite frankly, dangerous inner cable there, all the other cables are in pretty good nick, which I'm quite surprised at, really. You know, they'll certainly last a few months longer. But now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip here to try and get a little bit smoother braking as well as gear shifting. And it's the only time I ever advise working on a bike upside down or certainly not in an upright position. The reason is you're gonna apply a few drops of your lubricant, such as chain lubricant, something like that, onto the inner cable and allow it to work downwards into the outer cable. Basically, gravity's gonna do the work for you here. So allow it to soak in for a few minutes and you should feel slightly smoother braking. I love smooth braking and gear shifting for that matter. Now, I think I'm almost blessed by finding this bike and especially the fact that this headset doesn't require any attention. These older style headsets are renowned for becoming pitted, loose, horrible, juddery, everything like that, or certainly ones that haven't been taken care of. It makes me wonder why the previous owner of this bike was just giving it away when it's in pretty good condition, to be honest. Now, anyway, if you found yourself with one of these and it's not in good condition, first of all, take it apart, of course, using your headset spanners and inspect the inside of the races here. So when I say inspect, make sure they're not pitted, they're not damaged. Those are the most common things. If it is, I wouldn't bother putting in some new bearings and some new grease. Instead, I'd buy a complete new headset and have that fitted because you don't want to risk having unpredictable or dodgy steering. After all, 
It's pretty important, isn't it, your steering of your bike? Now time for the dreaded bottom bracket. I say dreaded because this was the thing which I noticed instantly as soon as I picked up the bike. I could just feel the cranks weren't quite perfect. And I like perfection on a bicycle. So I'm gonna take off the crank arm. I'm gonna also check out that bottom bracket just to see if there's any way at all I can get it working good again. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to put a fresh unit in there. Let's check it out. Now it's time to tackle this bottom bracket using some old school tools. Although believe me, these are actually brand new. Uh, and I think they're probably the first time they've been used in fact in the GCN Tech Workshop because we don't tend to have many bikes that come in with this style of bottom bracket on. So let's first up tackle that lock ring to remove it so we can get into the nitty gritty of the bottom bracket. What I am gonna do is actually just take up the slack of that and feel if the bearings are rough or smooth. Maybe it's something which has just happened because as you can see, that lock ring was mega loose. So it makes me think that the previous owner was maybe in the middle of a job and just gave up. Anyway, let's have a look and see how smooth it can be using the peg spanner here. Turn that, just take, try and take up a bit of that slack. It's quite stiff in there, but bottom bracket, there's no movement and it's nice and smooth. So we're in luck. I'm just gonna refit that lock ring and put the crank on. I'm pretty much good to go. But don't worry, there's a couple of things I am gonna do on it. Now you didn't think that I was gonna be able to get this bike up and running for only a couple of quid like I spent on this cable here, did you? No, in fact, I am gonna put on some new tires on this bike because these are certainly past their best. And well, I want to have the best puncture protection if ever I do go touring cycling on this bike. So, a little bit of investment there is more than worth it. Now I'm sure you'll agree that by putting some new tyres on this bike it is going to make sure that my riding is going to be slightly better protected against punctures as well as safer when cornering. Not to mention that those tyres I just removed were quite frankly terrifying as when I was popping them off the rim they were cracking and the smell, well that didn't leave much to the imagination. Now there is one final thing I'm going to do and that is wrap the handlebars. However, I'm not going to put you through all of that because I'm pretty particular when it comes to it. Instead, there is a video for that. Now, a little bit of advice. If ever you're walking along and you see a sign like this, don't carry on walking. Stop, take that bike because it could well be an absolute gem like I've found here with this. I'm amazed with it, to be perfectly honest. Now, remember as well, to let me know what you would check on a bike if you found it at the side of the road. Let me know down there in the comments section. And as ever, give this video a big old thumbs up and share it with your mates, especially if one of your mates has got a almost dumpster find like this. Don't forget too, to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for two more great videos, how about down here for how to service cup and cone bearings and here for how to put on new bar tape. Go on, give it a watch.